Okay, it's time. I gotta answer these questions once and for all. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and on any given day, the DMs in my Instagram account are somewhere around 50 to 100 per day. And I can tell you, it's often the exact same questions over and over and over again. And truthfully, I can even anticipate exactly what the questions are going to be based on what I post that day. So today I thought I'd do a little roundup of the top 10 DMs I get in my inbox. They're not all lettering related, but I still get these questions all the time. I'm gonna answer them all here right now in this video for you in no particular order. Let's do it. All right, number one, I actually lied. I am gonna do number one in a particular order. This is the number one most often question I get in my DMs. What pen is that? Hey Becca, what pen is that? What pen is this? What pen are you using? What's that pen? Ooh, I want that pen. What pen are you Where'd using? you get that pen? What pen is that? This is hands down the number one most asked question in my inbox, but there's sort of like a part two of that and that is what's the best pen for beginners the first one what pen is this well it depends what i posted that day it's always different but i have a 50 page supplies guide of all the pens that i love using and they're all clickable to amazon and guess what the guide is called what pen is this so if you've ever asked that question go download that guide it's free the second part to this question what's the best pen for beginners guess what i also have a resource for that shocking i know but it's also called the two best pens for beginners. <laughs> Guys, I answer these questions so many times, but if you've wondered either of those two things and haven't seen either of those resources yet, go check them out. I'm gonna link to everything in the description down below. Everything I mentioned in this video will be down there, so don't feel like you need to be writing notes or anything. Just go through the questions and then everything's down there for you. But long story short, if you just want the Coles notes, my favorite pen for beginners I recommend to everyone is the Tombow Furunosuke. It's just a small black tip pen and it's the best one. It's the easiest to use for beginners. It's the most like a pointed pen. It looks beautiful. It's the best, get that one. Oh, and while we're at it, what paper is that? I also have a video about that, just saying. All right, question number two, how do I learn calligraphy? Well, I'm glad you asked. This one always makes me laugh because literally my whole feed and my whole YouTube channel are all about how to learn calligraphy. But the short answer to this is that I have a beginner course and it's free and it's called Show Me Your Drills. And I walk you through the very basics of calligraphy, the supplies you need, how to set them up, how to hold them, how to get everything all set up the right way when you're first getting started, all the way to writing all the different strokes you need to learn in calligraphy to build up your alphabet. So if you wanna join that, you can find it at www.showmeyourdrills.com. But again, it's gonna be in the description down below. And if you don't wanna join an actual like free course, just go through this channel. I've got a whole playlist called Beginner Calligraphy. So check that one out too. All right, question number three, how do you film your Instagram and YouTube videos? So for Instagram, long story short, I use my phone. I don't do anything fancy for Instagram because I want it to be quick and easy. So if you see hyperlapse videos or real-time videos, they're all done with my phone. I have an iPhone. And then I use this tripod. This is called an Archon mount and it's my favorite tripod. I've got a video all about it right here. But I use my iPhone, my tripod, and then to edit, I use, for pictures, I use an app called Snapseed. And for videos, I use an app called Ultralight. And that's pretty much my process for Instagram in a nutshell, but I have a whole video about how I do it. I'm gonna keep saying that because I have a video about all of these things. This is just like a roundup of all the questions, but I've already answered pretty much all of them in a video. So again, links in the description. For YouTube, it's a bit more complicated. Here's a picture of my setup. And you can see that I have different cameras, different tripods, different lights, and they're all for different things. So I have one camera facing me, that's the one you're looking through right now to see me as I'm talking. Then I have one camera on a tripod that angles over my hands and they're both running at the same time. Then I have three different LED lights that I bought from a local store here in Ottawa. I knew absolutely nothing about this. I didn't know what I needed, but I get this. I went to the store and I asked the professional. I know, crazy idea, right? But seriously, that's what I did. I went and I told him what I was doing and he told me what to buy and I brought it home and I turned it on and that's the extent of that. So if you wanna ask me specific questions about video equipment, I don't actually know the answers. I recommend asking a professional. 
And then lastly, I have a Rode lavalier mic, which is this one. That's where the sound is coming from right now. And it's attached to my phone. So when I turn on my cameras, I turn on my phone, I use the voice notes app and I use this microphone. I also have a backup shotgun mic that's on top of the camera you're looking through right now, just in case the sound on this one doesn't work very well. So cameras, lights, microphones, it's all kind of just set up and it's really been a work in progress. If you look at my videos from a long time ago, they do not look like this. All right, next question. They, these are weird ones that aren't lettering related, but I get these questions times a million every time I post anything about my kitchen or my living room. The two questions are, where is your couch from? And what color are your cabinets? <laughs> so I'll just answer them. My couch is from Structube and um, I don't recommend it. Like whenever people ask me this question, I'm like, maybe it looks nice in videos and pictures and stuff but I don't recommend it. It's from Structube, which is not like a super high quality couch place. And uh, we've only had it for a few months and it's already not very comfortable. It's like falling, not falling apart, but like it shows where it shows where, where we've been sitting and um, it's not great. But I mean, if you want a cheap, decent looking couch and you don't care about comfort, it's from Structube. It's called the Soft Modular Sectional. Um, yeah. And then as far as my cabinets go, uh, my upper cabinets are an off white and my lower cabinets are like a dark gray, dark gray blue. We worked with a cabinet company here in Ottawa called Kitchencraft um, through our designer Bex Interiors. And the, so if you're in Ottawa and you're working with that company, you can get the same colors as me. The upper cabinets are called um, Alabaster and the lower cabinets are called Starless. Yeah, that pretty much answers those two questions. <laughs> All right, next question is, can you teach us majuscule or uppercase letters? They're really hard. Yeah, they're really hard. Um, and my answer for this is that, yes, I can teach them for you. I actually have a whole course for majuscule letters. Um, but the real answer is that with majuscule letters, it's not quite as simple as minuscule letters where you can break it down into all the different strokes. With this, you really just need to practice. You need to learn the shapes that you like especially in modern calligraphy, seeing other people's work and gathering inspiration and then really practicing and just nailing down styles that you like. And I know that's not the answer that everybody wants because it's not like a one and done solution. I can't just hand you, you know, a solution and have you learning majuscules like no problem. You really need to practice. But that being said, again, I do have a course. This one teaches you some basics. And then I also have uh, a free download for you that has 15 styles of every single uppercase letter that you can just take and trace. But that's really just a great spot for you to get inspiration and to try all different styles. Okay, next question, what bullet journal do you use and how do you set yours up? So I'm a bit of a unique bullet journaler in that I don't actually bullet journal, but I do make my own journal from scratch. So if you know anything about bullet journaling, there is a whole process. And if you read Ryder, Ryder Carroll's book about bullet journaling, it teaches you how to actually use it for productivity and do all of the things to make it a real like bullet journal. Um, so I read that, I tried it for a little bit, didn't really work for me. I'm one of those people who like buys 50 different planners every year and can't figure out one that's perfect that has the exact layout that I want. So I decided to kind of combine bullet journaling and regular planners and make a baby with them essentially. So I use the Archer and Olive journal and I have a whole playlist of how I set it up to make it work for me. I'll link to that too. But basically I take a blank journal and I draw the planner layout the way I want it. So I break it down by hour every single day and I actually use it as a planner instead of more of like a tracker, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't call myself a bullet journaler, but I do have a handmade planner. Okay. The next question is, are your cats siblings and can we see more of your cats? <laughs> I get so many cat questions in my DMs, which is so funny because I really never meant to be a cat person. We got the cats on such a whim, uh, but I totally underestimated how many cat people I had in my audience. <laughs> I actually debated like not sharing cat stuff at all because I didn't want to be one of those people who shares like a million cat videos every single day. but. Every time I do, I get so many questions and so many like heart eye emojis about the cats. So their names are Jimmy and Marge. Jimmy's the white one, Marge is the black one. They're not siblings. Uh, we just adopted them both at the same time. And they really hated each other that first day, but they've been inseparable ever since. So they have two very different personalities. Jimmy is 
standoffish like 90% of the time, but then in the 10% of the time where he's not standoffish, he's like the most cuddly cat you've ever seen and he has the loudest purr on earth. He also bites a little bit, but usually it's just love bites, it's fine. And Marge is the opposite. She is always around me and she's always making funny little like brrr noises all the time. Like she'll probably come in at some point during this video and do that. She always wants to be around me. She's always like lying really funny on the floor and posing, trying to get my attention. And fun fact, Marge also one time locked herself in the dryer overnight. It wasn't on, but she got herself stuck in there and she like fully died. And Ryan gave her CPR and revived her at four o'clock in the morning. But that's a story for another day. Oh, you wanted to see them too. Okay, hold on a second. Can you come here? Come here, come in the camera. Here. <laughs> so this is Marge. She knows she's not supposed to be on my desk, so she's treating this like a, like a, a really exciting event. Um, but this is Marge. She's very sweet. She would sit here all day with me. And then she gets up, of course, but she's gonna sit. Okay, now let me get Jimmy. Okay, here's Jimmy. He does not want to be here. He's probably going to scratch me, but he's very cute. Hey, eh? you're nice sometimes. I had to use treats to get him to come. Anyway, okay, enough. Of, I'm covered in cat hair now. Thanks, guys. I'm covered in cat hair. Anyway, that's Marge and Jimmy. Okay, next question. Back to lettering. How do you make paint pens not streaky? So I'm gonna start this off by saying that if you've seen a project on Instagram where it looks like the paint pens aren't streaky, they probably are. They're prob that picture is probably edited to make it look like it's not streaky, but I promise you in real life, it's probably, I think I have cat hair in my mouth. Like, anyway, it's probably actually streaky and you just aren't seeing it to an extent. So by nature, paint pens, like the, the way the tip is, they look streaky when you fill them in. And there are a few ways to like get around that, but realistically, it's a handmade product. It's not gonna look like a sticker. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth. So let me just tell you right off the bat that if yours is like a little bit streaky, it's so fine. That being said, I do have a few tips for you. So tip number one is to always use the biggest size of paint pen tip that you can. So don't use a little tiny dinky paint pen to fill in a giant area. Get the one with the giant tip on it. Use the biggest tip you possibly can. Tip number two is to always shake it really, really, really well, like constantly as you're working and always have a like plastic surface beside you that you can keep pushing down on the tip and depress it and almost even like make a little puddle in your in your plastic tray so that you can dip it in and make sure the tip of that pen is always like soaking wet. And then third, this is key, don't go over dry spots. Like if you write your word and then you notice it looks a little streaky, you can't go back with your paint pen and try and go over it again or it's gonna chip off and it's gonna annoy the crap out of you. So you have to work quickly and if you're doing calligraphy, you have to be thickening the downstrokes as you go. So don't write the whole word and then go back and thicken because it's gonna chip off the pieces that are already dry. But again, don't worry about it being a little bit streaky, it's totally fine. And the other important thing to note here is if you're doing like a window, like a storefront window, it's always gonna look streakier on the inside, but when you're outside looking in, you can't see those streaks. And that's all the client really cares about, right? And by the way, at the, at the time that we're recording this video, I'm actually creating a signage course. So if you're interested in tips like this, or you wanna actually really get into doing big signage and stuff with paint pens like this, go sign up for the waitlist at signingupcourse.com because it's gonna be really good. Okay, second last question. How did I get started with calligraphy? This is one I get all the time. Do you have a full video on it? You can watch it here, but I'll give you the Coles notes. So basically, I had a full-time job. I was working in construction project management. I studied interior design in school, and I actually really liked my job. I wasn't planning on leaving it. I was doing a lot of AutoCAD and floor plans and, and, and stuff like that, and I loved it. But it wasn't super creative, and I've always been a creative person, so I thought I should get some sort of hobby. And something drew me to calligraphy, no pun intended, but I just, like, I always really liked handwriting growing up. I always used to, like, copy people's handwriting and stuff. I'm sure some of you can relate. And I found a calligraphy course in my city, and I went and took it one night with a bunch of girlfriends, and I got absolutely obsessed with it. Like, I was dreaming about calligraphy that night. So I um, started practicing obsessively, and I got pretty good at it. And then people started asking me to do work for them, and I started an Instagram account, and then people started asking me to teach, and it just, like, absolutely snowballed from there. So that was 25. 15 I took the course 
Um, and now we're 2021 and I'm still going strong and learning new stuff every day and answering questions like this on a YouTube channel, which I never anticipated. <laughs> so that's my story in a nutshell. Oh, Marge is back. But yeah, if you wanna watch the whole thing, go watch that, that full video I have on it. Cause in there I actually even give you some of my best tips if you wanna start a business like mine. And speaking of which, that's the last question. The last question is kind of like three parts actually. How do you start a business? How do you know when it's time to pursue calligraphy full-time? And how do you price your products and services? So these are three very different questions, but they're all business related. And I wanted to keep this list to 10, so I'm putting three in one for you here at the end. So the first one, how do you start a business? You just do it. There's no real handbook on how to start a business. I mean, there's lots of courses and there's lots of advice, but there's no one like giant thing, giant rule you need to follow to start a business. You just do it. I knew negative zero about starting a business before I started mine and I've managed to get this far. And if I can, then you can too. You just figure things out as you go. But logistically, if I were to give you like a couple steps of things to do at the very start, here's what I would say. Number one, figure out what you want your business name to be and make sure that you can actually secure the domain, which means like the website for that. So you would go to like GoDaddy and look up whether that domain is available. Um, and same with social media accounts. If you can't get the social media or the website for the business name you want, you might wanna switch it up, unfortunately. Then once you've secured that, you've decided what your name's gonna be and you've got the social media accounts, you can just go and Google and type in business license and then put in your state or your province and do what it tells you to do. So for me, that was paying like $30 to register a business license and it doesn't actually like mean that much or need to be that overwhelming. And then you're off and running and start figuring out what you need to do next, put one foot in front of the other. Okay, question two for this was, uh, how do you know when it's time to pursue calligraphy full-time? This is a super personal question. It's totally up to you and your personality type, but for me, it was a matter of knowing when I was able to replace my full-time income from my job with my passion. So as soon as I was able, oh my God, there's cat hair everywhere now. It's in the air. But as soon as I was able to replace my annual income with my calligraphy work, that's when I started realizing like I could do this full time and I can actually sustain myself and not stress the crap out of myself. So I think there's a couple different types of people. Like there's people who are like, oh, I'll just jump now and then maybe a parachute will appear. I am not that person. I do not like that. I don't like being stressed. I don't like not having a plan. I'm more of like a pack the parachute a couple years in advance and then keep checking it weekly and repacking it if need be for the next couple years until you know for sure that it's gonna work and then jump. <laughs> it's funny because I have jumped out of a plane and, and I didn't do that, but that's besides the point. All I'm saying is it's totally a personal decision. You could be a person like me who wants to wait and make sure you actually have a runway of savings, or you could be a person who thrives off that chaos and wants to make the leap before you're actually ready. So it's totally up to you. Okay, and part three, how do you price your work and your services? This is not a question I can cover in a video like this, but pricing is like so important and is such a big topic. I've got a lot of videos about that. You can start with this one and I'll link to it down below. But I also have a full pricing course at panicfreepricing.com. And if you're a beginner and you have no idea where to start, it's such a good place to start and it'll help you avoid so many mistakes. So I've got this video, I've got a couple other pricing things on YouTube here, and then I've got a full course. And all of it is so important when you're first getting started. Whew. Okay, so like I said about 15 times throughout this video, all the things I've told you about uh, are gonna be down in the description. You can click on whichever ones you needed. And if you want me to make a part two of this video, if you have other questions that I didn't answer, leave a comment down below, leave me your questions and I'll come back to this and film a, a part two, kind of ask me anything sort of style. I'd love if you hit like on this video to let me know that you found it helpful. And in the meantime, I'm gonna link you to that last resource I told you about, the pricing video. That'll be the next one that'll play right after this. And I hope to see you over there.